Okay, guys. So we are starting our uh, session on uh, the slide class for today. Okay, the slide that we will be doing today will be from uh, May June two thousand and eleven, paper three three. Question number two. Okay, so let's start. As you can see, the question says, K1 is a slide of a stain transfer section of through a leaf. Draw a large plan diagram of the part of the leaf indicated by the shaded area in figure 2.1, right? Which means that the slide that will be given to you will include this entire part, right? but you are only supposed to draw the large plan diagram of the part of the leaf indicated by the shaded area, which means this shaded area in figure 2.1. So always read the instructions carefully and then proceed. And it, it also says that you label the vascular bundle and the palisade layer. So if I have to draw the large plan diagram of this area, then my diagram should look somewhat like this. I'll draw and I'll tell you how it should look. But basically, uh, let me first zoom in and just give you a rough idea as to what it is. As you can see, it looks like the transverse section of a leaf. And uh, there are many uh, evidences from this diagram that will tell you that it's a leaf. You can see the upper epidermis, you can see the lower epidermis, and uh, you can see the palisade mesophyll, the spongy mesophyll, right? Let me point it out for you. This is the palisade mesophyll. These cells which are scattered with lots of air spaces in between are the spongy mesophyll, right? And uh, then um, somewhere here in the middle, you can see the vascular bundle with the xylem and the phloem, right? So you can see lots of layers over here. Let's try to make a plan diagram of the shaded part only. Okay, so this means that most probably the shape of your plan diagram should look like this, right? Okay, so now I'm drawing. If you look at the various layers, this is your upper epidermis. Right? And then you have to show your palisade layer. So your palisade will be like this. If you want, you can make it a bit curved also. Uh, of course, in reality, the shape is not like this. this. This is only representing the part that you have to draw. So let's uh, make it look more natural. Right? So you can draw like this. And then the palisade mesophyll. After the palisade mesophyll, we can see the spongy layer. But of course, we won't be uh, like drawing it as a separate layer. Let me, I think I should draw the palisade layer a little bit thicker. So it should be somewhat like this. Then you have the lower epidermis.
And then in the middle, you should draw this vascular bundle. If you want, you can draw some small spaces because they also represent individual layers. So this is roughly your diagram, how your diagram should look like. You have to label the vascular bundle and the palisade layer. So this is your palisade layer. And this is your vascular bundle. And now let's move on to this bit. From K1, the slide that you've got, make a large drawing of one epidermal cell with one attached whole trichome or hair. Label the trichome or hair and the epidermal cell. So this is what they want you to draw. Let me first zoom in to show you what you're supposed to draw. This is the trichome. Okay. Let me highlight it for you. This is the trichome. It's a hair-like structure. And this hair-like structure is has to be drawn as a high power drawing together with one epidermal cell attached. Right? Trichome, uh, actually, those are hairs. And you can see lots of trichomes over here as well. See, these are all trichomes. And they are uh, attached to the epidermal cells. Right Over here, over here, you can see all around. For this, you will have to focus this slide on the high power, which is a power of 40. And then only you'll be able to see lots of these trichomes. Right? Uh, so let's draw a high power drawing. Make a large drawing of one epidermal cell with one attached whole trichome or hair. You will do the details of these trichomes, why they are there, and what is their function when we are doing transport in plants in detail. But right now, I can tell you that these hairs are found in plants which grow in desert areas where the supply of water is less so that they can trap a layer of moisture around them. And uh, the rate of transpiration can hence be cut down. Otherwise, these plants will lose a lot of water through their leaves and will become wilted, right? So this is how you're going to draw. This is the correct method. Whereas I'll just give you a wrong method also to draw so that you should not draw it like this. This is the wrong way to draw a trichome with an epidermal cell. This is the wrong way. Right? So do not draw it in this manner. Yes, you will draw it like this. Label the trichome hair and epidermal cell. So yes, you will label it. Let's label it. This is your trichome hair. And this is your epidermal cell. Let's move on to this bit. State two observable, observable features of K1 which support the conclusion that this is a leaf from a plant growing in a dry habitat. And those should be two observable features. Explain how these features reduce water loss. So one feature is that, of course, this leaf has got trichomes. Okay. Trichomes are going to trap a layer of moist air. which will reduce the gradient for transpiration to occur. 
Hence, less transpiration means less water loss. And another feature, let's search for another feature. We can see that the surface of the leaf is rolled, okay? So since it's rolled inwards, that's very obvious in this picture, that is also a mechanism uh, by means of which the water loss can be reduced, okay? And we can check some other features in the mark scheme as well. Let's go through the mark scheme to see. Yes, the leaf surface is curled because it reduces evaporation, as I said. You can see trichomes or hair-like structures. They also trap a layer of moist air. They prevent the diffusion gradient needed for evaporation to occur. And other features which are visible in this diagram are cuticle also. Cuticle is a thick layer which surrounds the epidermis that prevents or reduces evaporation. And if we very carefully look at the lower epidermis, we can see stomata and these stomata are sunken. I will not go into the details of sunken stomata over here because we will already, we have to cover this when we are doing transport and plants with you. So for the time being, as far as this slide is concerned, I think these two points or three points are more than enough that the leaf surface is curled, uh, trichomes are there, or cuticle is also there. All are meant to reduce the water loss, right? So I think this much is enough because the question already carries only two marks. Moving on to this part of the question. It's a long question today, uh, this one. The figure 2.2. Now this figure is already given in the question paper. But now see, you have, uh, your book is black and white. It's not colored. So it's good that you, you know, uh, see this recording so that uh, the very structures will be more clear to you as compared to the photocopy uh, image of your book your slide booklet. So figure 2.2 is a photomicrograph of a transfer section of a leaf from a different plant species, right? And uh, here also it, you can see trichomes, you can see epidermal cells, but the entire structure of the leaf is not shown. You can see that this diagram is magnified to 350 times. You must have done magnification and resolution uh, these days because you're doing chapter cell, right? Let's do some calculation bit. The question says, use the magnification, right? To calculate the actual length of the line Y. The line Y has been shown to you and you're supposed to calculate the actual length of line Y in micrometers. In micrometers, this is the line Y and the magnification has been given to you and you're supposed to find out the actual length. Let's see, first of all, you will measure this line y okay and if you measure i'll just tell you the range which most of you will get the range should be um, all these answers can be taken as correct 87.5 88.5 89.5 and of course, since you all know from your O levels, from your ATP that we do all measurements in millimeters, after that we can convert it into micrometers. So once we are done with any of these measurements, we will convert this into a micrometer by multiplying it by thousand, right? And in that case, then we will get our, let's say if it's 88, so you multiply 88 by thousand. In fact, when I did it myself, my measurement was 87. So then the answer will be 87,000 micrometers. Okay. This will be the formula I will use to find out the actual size. Therefore, actual size is equal to this. 87,000 is the image size you got. Magnification is 350 times, right? And your correct answer is, uh, will be a whole number, right? Like, for example, any whole number ranging from 248, in fact, uh, yes, 248 to 254. Or you can also answer in two decimal places, right? So th these are the answers which are acceptable. 248 till 254. And you can also answer up to two decimal places. For example, your answer, if it is, if it comes out to be I'm just giving you a 
this is also taken as correct or your answer can be 254.30 that's also correct right so very quickly you get your actual size in micrometers and then is the last part of the question in which you are asked to prepare the space below so that it is suitable for you to record the observable similarities and the differences between the specimens on k1 and in figure 2.2 k1 is the slide that you had got figure 2.2 is this one so you are going to make a table right in which you are you will be comparing because when similarities and differences means comparing the two but the observable features right so very quickly i'll give you an idea about how you will draw a comparison table and please see that this table is carrying five marks so you have to uh, make it properly always remember whenever you are given a comparison table your first column will be the feature and then you have two more columns okay you will first note the feature this is your k1 and this is your figure 2.2 right so i am just writing two features and the rest of the features you will recognize yourself because it will be too much spoon feeding then so let's say if i take into account the trichomes i would say that the trichomes in k1 um they are found on single cells right and whereas in figure 2.2 we can see trichome in the form of a layer on the epidermal cells cuticle is present or you can say it's thin in k1 whereas there is no cuticle cuticle is absent in figure 2.2 let me give you one more difference you can write down difference or similarity it's up to you stomata are present in k1 whereas i can't see stomata in figure 2.2 